Life is wrapped up in the boy. And that's all he is, a boy. A child, you might say. He's all that the girl's been living for. It'll be just as if we execute both of them. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be meddlesome or presumptuous. Yes, sir, I know we're all bound by the law. It's just that ever since the boy's been in prison and the girl's been working in town, I've spent a lot of time with both of them. My wife and I feel almost as if they were our own children. Yes, sir. I do understand my duty as warden. Sorry, Governor. Goodbye. He wouldn't do anything. He says he's already issued two reprieves. And no new evidence has been produced. What did he tell the girl last night? He refused to see her. You mean... he let that child travel all the way to the capital and then wouldn't see her? There was nothing he could do for her. He said he honestly thinks the boy is guilty. Just sit at the table. Maybe I can get her to eat something. At least some hot coffee. The child is sick.
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Will you say this one with me? Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. According unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. According unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. And cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgressions. And cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgressions. But I don't, Padre. I don't acknowledge it. I'm not guilty of any sin. about does anybody ever get what he really wants sometimes I never did all my life I've wanted to be somebody somebody important and all my life I've been nobody but it isn't for us to judge who's somebody and who's nobody is it I'm six feet tall I'm strong I'm healthy but I couldn't even make a team in high school. Any team. Why is that? Lots of us have to sit in the grandstand. But why? Why? We can't all be star players. No. We can't all sit in the grandstand either. Some of us always have to sit in the bleachers. I could never figure it out. up the hill, how I captured a hundred prisoners all by myself. She'd be proud of me. She was. Sure. She had a lot to be proud of. Two years in the army, pounding a typewriter in Tennessee. I never even got to be a corporal. And then... This 
newspaper job on the Globe Express. Cub reporter, they call it. They chased me all over town to get items about ladies' clubs and strawberry festivals, whose sister was visiting whose aunt. But every reporter begins that way. Sure. But I could tell that's the way I'd end, too. That's why when I ran into Tim Harris mob and saw a chance to break it and be a big shot reporter, and then I... circuit. Jim, will you get word to the boy that she's here in there with my wife? Yes, sir. I'll tell him. Tell him I kept my promise. Yes, sir. Have you sent the bus after the newspaper men? Not yet, sir. This is one of those days nothing seems to work right. The bus will be a little late. You better phone Pop's place and let them know. Yes, sir. Get me Pop's place. Pop speaking. Hello, Jim. Yeah, I'll tell him. How's the girl? She looked mighty poorly getting off the bus. Yeah, I guess we all do. Bye. Message for your newspaper for a minute. The prison bus will be a little late picking you up. Thanks, Pop. Okay. Just got word from Pops the prison bus will be late. Man, it feels like we've been waiting here a hundred years. Who? Don't you know Pops? He's a character that runs this place. I thought you'd been down here. Well, it's on the state highway about a mile south of the prison. It's got a bit of everything bus station, gas pumps, short order restaurant, post office. Yeah, Pops is the postmaster, too. He handles the prison mail and the town. And then uh, in the back, he's got rooms, but mostly for truckers coming down from the north. Yeah, that's right. They all come right by here, and it makes a convenient break after driving all night. They uh, usually stop for breakfast and a few hours sleep. Yeah, yeah I did. I made a few notes here. Now, uh, I can't read my own writing. Oh, yes. Uh, you can work this line into the lead paragraph. Always, on the grim gray dawn of an execution, it seems as if, instead of rising, the sun sets. Sure, that's good writing. Okay. Okay, so send me the Pulitzer Prize. Yeah, they're all here, all the same dumb faces I've been meeting for years. Except the Herald, they sent some kid down to cover it. I never saw him before. He's not dry behind the ears yet, and he's scared to death. Who, zombie? Oh, sure, he's sitting right here beside me now. Uh-huh. Looks like a little red hen setting a nest. Getting all ready to hatch one of his heartbreaking sob stories. <laughs> Can you imagine a fat pixie gremlin like that writing a sob column under a phony name like Barbara Love? <laughs> Heartbeats by Barbara Love. How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> Two of the gents from the competing wire services are locked in mortal combat trying to scoop each other at gin rummy. Oh, sure. Old Repulsive is here, too. Uh-huh. Kibitzing the card game and breathing down their necks. What an obnoxious character that is. The gentleman from the Globe Express is, as usual, getting into everybody's hair. What am I so happy about? Listen, I'm not happy, brother. I'm sick. Covering executions is what makes me hate this rotten racket. Just talking fast now to keep my teeth from chattering. I'm as jittery as that new kid from the Herald. We all are. I'll call you back. Are you half wit? Why didn't you go down? You Schneider him. Put your hand down. See? He's stuck with 15. 
If I had a long, sawtoothed, rusty bolo knife, I'll play with him, Ed. I've got enough. So have I. My, my. Bad nerves. Yes, sir, I can see that you two characters have passed your prime. First sign of a reporter's crack up is bad nerves on a routine assignment. Can't take the pressure. But hasn't the girl told you anything more? Can't you think of something? Something with human interest about the boy. Some angle, like he was brought up in an orphan asylum. Or he killed Tim Howard because Howard tried to attack his girl. I told you it wasn't anything like that. Besides, I don't know him too well. It's a girl I know, and she don't talk much. She just works here for me serving table. Well, what time does she come on? She ain't working today. What's wrong, son? Scared? Yes. Is this your first? Yes. Do you ever get used to them? Uh-uh. Why did your paper send you out? You're pretty young. It's my father's idea. He said an assignment like this would make me grow up fast. Father? He's editor on the Herald. Oh, him. But he didn't tell me important this was. I thought it was just another gang killing. It was. Then why are you here? And those others, the three wire services, feature syndicate, two state papers, and all those direct telephone lines to the editors, set up for just this one story. What makes it that important? It's the dawn of a new enlightened era in this state. The abolishment of the gallows, the first electrocution. Why, it's history, son, and a field day for us reporters. Oh, I, I kept thinking maybe this kid this murderer was somebody special. No, nobody special. He splits the top billing with the new electric chair. Only the chair will stay. And he'll... Make the headlines for one edition. Right. By tomorrow, he'll be pushed off the front page, back through the paper, into the obituary column. And from there, nobody knows who gets his story next. When a person dies, he gets a chance to meet his God. Is that true? Yes, that's true. And if he tells God he's innocent, God will believe him if it's the truth. If it's the truth. Would you believe me? No. I'd believe the truth. Do you want to tell me? Yes, Padre. It would be kind of a rehearsal. Take it easy, son. I can't even get my story started. All right, put this down. You do shorthand, don't you? Yes, sir. Good. Start with the regular lead. First paragraph. The sovereign state of... You sure there's no state for the capital S? exacted the extreme payment today for the murder of Tim Hara, well-known political figure. At 5.35 a.m., exactly 18 minutes after sunrise, you'll have to check the clock when they pull the switch. It may vary a couple of minutes one way or the other. The condemned, or you could just say murderer, then put in his name. Always get the name in as early as you can. Walk the last mile to the recently constructed execution chamber and became the first to pay the penalty in the state's new electric chair. Maintaining his innocence to the very last, as he had done throughout the trial. The murderer walked with a smile That's and corny. It's always good. That's true. Sure. sure, didn't he keep saying it all through the trial? Two trials. That's right, he kept saying it all through both trials. I'm innocent. I didn't kill Tim Hara. Now get this. I'm going to show you just how the murder was committed. Here we go again, boys. This is Tim Harrah's room. Hara is sitting in this chair. George, you sit here. You're Hara. Ed, you stand here. No, Ed, over further. That's right. Now, Ed is the murderer. The door is right here, directly behind him. Now, here's the murder weapon. Murder weapon. Now, we need two cops. Frank, you and I will be the cops. No, never mind. I'll be both of them. Now, I am cruising along. I hear shots. Six of them. Fired so fast they sound like one. I stop my car. Rush upstairs. And what do I find? Hara's dead with six slugs. The murderer is standing right here. No, Ed, over further. 
That's right. He's standing right there with a hot gun in his hand. All six chambers fired. Not another cell in the room and the door closed. And the laboratory proves that the bullets from this gun killed Tim Harris. And open and shut case. But the boy never admits it. Oh, imagine that. He cooks up a cock and bull story right out of Grimm's fairy tale. I heard six shots behind me. I saw Tim Harris slump. I turned fast to see who had fired those shots. But I never did see. Someone hit me right here in the stomach. The punch must have knocked me out. When I came to, it couldn't have been more than a minute. The police came in. I had this hot gun in my hand. It wasn't mine. I never had one. But I was holding the gun that killed Tim Hare. How do you like that for a defense? Harold was shot by a ghost, but nobody saw him. Not even the boy, and he wasn't three feet from the door, right back up. Nobody but a half would, would have dreamed that one up. He could have pleaded self-defense. Or insanity. But not this cookie. He stuck to the ghost story, and nobody could make him change. His own lawyer didn't believe him. How could he? Nobody believed him. Nobody believed him. Nobody. But he didn't do it. How could he? He never heard anything in his whole life. Of course, there was that girl that he was going to marry. She stuck to him right there. Ah, puppy lovey, don't even make a story. She hasn't got any more brains than he what has. What makes you an expert on brains? Boy, don't I. He worked on my paper, oh, he? was smarter than you think he must have been. Uh, the thing that fooled me was how he got tied in with Tim Harris. The best fast company in any league. And this kid was strictly a busher, a cub reporter. Used to do ladies' club assignments, charity picnics. Harris took a liking to me when I came to interview him once about some charity he was running. He kept asking me to come back to see him. Pretty soon I was running errands for him. But he didn't want me to quit the paper. He said a reporter could move about any place. And no one would get suspicious. Yeah, that's one thing I could never figure out, what Harris saw in the boy. Me neither. The biggest politician in the state, the biggest connection. The biggest crook and the biggest mob. That hijacking mob of his alone must have netted him a couple of million a year. There wasn't a truck cargo on the road that he didn't get tipped off about. They hijacked everything, truckload after truckload. Nylons, woolens, silks, liquor, furs, everything. And his mob never got caught, not once. The cops never even made an arrest. How come you never cracked it, hot shot? You're a local paper. It was right under your nose. Uh, we never even suspected, Harry. He was too slick and he had perfect protection. It must have been plenty high up. What I wanted to find out was who was giving Harry his protection. If I could find that out, I could break the story in my paper and smash up the Harry mob all by myself. Then I'd be somebody. Somebody important. A star player, like you said. Not just sitting in the bleachers all my life. Imagine the nerve of that peanut saying he was going to smash the hair mob all by himself. He might have been on the level. How can you tell what goes on inside a kid like that? If he'd been on the level, he'd have told me you're the boss. I could have shown him how to crack that story. Maybe he didn't trust you. That alone would prove he had brains. That story is right out of Horatio Alger. From cub to star reporter. In one easy jump. He must have wanted a byline. He'll get it tonight. In the obits column. Then you've got the whole story. News, color, evidence, and the personal opinions of all the experts on other people's lives. Do you think you can write it? I don't know. But thanks, I'll try. I, I guess I'm a little confused. Who isn't? They were all against that boy. But somehow I got the feeling that you believed his story. Did you? Son, I've been at this business ever since I was younger than you are. And I've learned only one thing from it. 
When people sit in judgment on other people, they're butting into his business. I don't judge, I just report. Frank, it's getting awfully late. What do you suppose is keeping that bus? I'll go back and see if Pops is hurt anymore. Pops, you heard any more about the bus? No, but they'll be along presently. They won't put the show on without you fellows. Hey, Frank, come here a minute, will you? Remember any of these? They were all pretty ancient. Mark Andrews, Pinky Roskowski, Steve Mulbach, Parrot Faruco. Yep, they brought them all back alive, except the parrot. Parrot Faruco. How long has he been dead? Oh, about three years, I guess. They fished him out of the river in the cement block. Yeah, I remember. You know something, Frank? What? If he were alive, they pinned Tim Harris' murder on him. Wait a minute. It had his trademark, didn't it? Yeah. Six shots from a 38 revolver fired so fast they sounded like one. The parrot was the only man that could shoot like that. Say, might be an angle. Yeah. You followed up. I can't talk to the dead. Too bad. I've often wondered what they'd say. Hey, Pops. Uh -huh. Did you ever meet any of these wanted fellows? Not as you know of. Your collection's out of date, isn't it? I guess so. I've been meaning to clean it up, but I'll never get around to it. Always somebody keeps me from getting my work done. <laughs> well, there's nothing like pictures of old friends, is there? You know, I've been looking at them faces so long they do seem like old friends. Take that pirate Faruco fellow, for instance, the one with the poly nose and the flap ears. Sometimes I imagine he's speaking to me. Say, now you're really cooking. Cooking? Sure. You've just given me my first story idea. The postmaster, who's been looking at the wanted poster so long, it finally talks to him. That's good. Good human interest. That'll make me a swell Sunday feature. Fine. Fine. Now maybe you quit bothering me with questions. I'm a half hour behind with my mail. Hey, Pop, who's that? Uh, that's a trustee on the hill. Picks up the mail for him. He's been coming here every morning for years. Any story on him? I couldn't say. I don't keep asking questions like some. How long is he in for? At his age, life. Why? Something to do with that same parrot Faruco fellow we've been talking about. He noticed that poster of the parrot about three years ago when I first tacked it up. He got so mad I thought he'd throw a fit. What'd he say? He said he was doing this stretch because the parrot framed him. A long while ago when the parrot was one of the biggest mobsters in this section. And then? Never mention it again. Well, don't you know the details? Why don't you ask him? You get a knack for questions. I will. ready to go out yet. I don't know where my head is this morning. Draw yourself a mug of coffee. I'll call you when I'm ready. Six o'clock, do you? That's right. Six o'clock. It'll be over by then. What? Will it be? Same as usual? Mm -hmm. Yeah, same, Pop. 
You know, it's funny I should run into you this way, because I came all the way out here, especially just to look you up. Breakfast with them guards, same as usual. The feature editor kept telling me about you. He said I should be sure to find you. Said you were one of the most colorful men he's ever talked to. Maybe you remember him. Jim Reynolds. Cigar. Reynolds wants me to do a piece on one of the toughest characters this country ever saw. He said you're the only man that ever had the courage to stand up to him. And that you could give me plenty of dope. I'm, uh, I'm talking about Parrot Peruko. Never heard of him. kind of stuff you want to get into your story. What? This truck and those men guarding it, pulling up here just before the execution. Truck? How does that fit in? Crow freight lines. Tim Harris' mob hijacked dozens of their trucks. You guys do your sleeping fast. I want that load delivered before tonight. Okay, Blackie, just a couple of hours. You know, we was really burning Don't up waste the road. in time. Go get your shut-eye. Yeah. Be right with you, fellas. Your eggs will be ready in a few minutes. Be right with you, Blackie. Just bring me coffee. Black. Oh, all right. What time do you want me to wake you up? Not later than 8. The boss wants to get moving. Yeah, he's kind of jumpy today. Who oh, ain't? Seems like this thing's took hold of everybody. The short calls, huh? Come, you're waiting on table. Where's the girl? You couldn't expect her to be working today. Why? Why? The boy's going to the chair. You know about that. I read the papers. Poor child. I don't know how she's going to keep living with him gone. Why, what's he to her? They grew up together. Since they was kids, they was going to get married. Didn't she tell you? She never talked about herself. No. She ain't that kind. She come to work here the same time they sent him to the death house. You remember? Do I? She wanted to be close so she could see him every visiting day. She had me fooled. I didn't know she had trouble like that. It's a good kid. It's too bad. No, I ain't ready. I only got two hands. It'll be a half hour yet. Yeah, he's waiting. Everybody's jumpy today. Want to know why you haven't come back with the man? Should have told him I resigned. I got a job I'm going to like better. Agreed. Of course, if I were in yours. How's our spot any different from yours? If you have to wait long for this bus coming in, you won't even make your last additions. Well, you won't get to a phone any faster than we will. 
I don't have to worry. I suppose you file your stories by television. No, I use the phone. But I filed this one last night while you were all sleeping. Genius. This is one time we'll beat the radio. The boss hates newscasters. And you get your stories from a crystal ball. No, from... These things are all alike, and if you know your business, you can file them in your sleep. I can. At 5.35, the executioner pulls the switch. At 5.36, we'll be on the streets. And you guys will be waiting for the bus. How much longer are you going to be? We ain't got all day. Take it easy. All you've got to do is throw a switch. I've got to make it work. Well, you better make it work. By 5.35, you've been messing around with that thing. Take it easy, I said. It'll be ready on time. How are you getting along? All right, now. I had to check through the whole feeder circuit. But I'm sure we've got the voltage up to where we need it. How much longer will you be? Oh, about five minutes. Just a couple of connections and a test. There's no chance of a slip-up, is there? Not anymore. Just so as you understand, both of you. This is no time for gruesome mistakes. I'll hold you personally responsible. Look, Deputy, I've never had any failures so far, and I don't intend to start now. It'll be ready on time. All right, then you check with me in my office in ten minutes. Check. The men from the newspapers are here, sir. Have them wait. I'll come for them when we're ready. Yes, sir. You'll tell her all that, won't you? Everything. And tell her not to think about anything else. Because that's what I'll be thinking about. I will. And tell her... I've always loved her. And I always... Always isn't very long now, is it? And I always will. I just wanted to see how you were. He's fine, Jim, fine. I wish all men could be as sure as he is. Is she here? Good grief, I forgot to tell you. Yes, she's in the warden's office with his wife. Will you wait here for a few minutes, Jim? I've got to talk to her. Sure, but there's only... I know I'll be back. You won't forget anything I told you, Padre. Not one word. Sorry, I am. I should have come here when the warden told me. That's but... all right. I knew she'd be here. She said she would. that you'll only make him very unhappy. You wouldn't want to do that, would you? He doesn't want you to think about anything that's happening now or, or anything that's going to happen. Will you try? He wants you to think only of all the beautiful, wonderful times you used to spend together. Because that's what he's thinking about. And if you want to be together with him now, well, that's what you must keep thinking about. Do you remember that picnic at Schuster's Grove where you and he won the dancing cup? Although he hardly knew how to dance. You did all the leading and he just kept stepping on your feet. He wasn't that bad. Remember how you fooled the judges? Every time I saw them looking at us, I'd swing them around real fast. That's right. Remember what the contest judges said? It was our best step. They thought we were spinning on purpose. And you won the cup. Yes. And then he said we ought to celebrate. 
And he went to the soda fountain and had them fill the cup full of raspberry sundae. But what happened to that raspberry sundae? I think he... He spilled it all over your new dress. Yes. We were so worried because we were afraid the stains wouldn't come out. But I had the dress tied the same color as the syrup. And it turned out beautiful. Prettier than new. Why, sure. Because that's the dress you wore when you won the beauty contest. At the high school prom. He was very proud of you. I was proud of him, too. He saved up for my first corsage. A real orchid. And to the prom. Remember? A whole bunch of us kids went to Dreamland Park. Does this remind you of anything? Oh, sure. I've got mine, too. I wouldn't give it away for anything. See? We still laugh when we look at it, because right after it was taken, the wooden horse fell apart and we landed on the floor. And then you sneaked away from the other kid. Ferris wheel? They're up there. Alone. Right up on top. And the wheel got stuck. They didn't get it fixed for hours. Playing that wheezy old calliope. They thought we'd get scared up there all alone. If they stopped the music. You remember that music? I'll never forget it. We were right up. Almost in the sky. We thought if we could just reach out. We could touch the stars. And that's when you promised each other that you'd always be together. Always. And after that, you kept going back just to ride the Ferris wheel. We, we kept hoping it would get stuck again. <laughs> You'll keep your promise to him, won't you? And you won't let anything come into your mind except just what we've been talking about. I promise. You'll be very happy. Now I have another message that he wants you to keep remembering and remembering. And saying and saying, because that's what he's saying. I've always loved you. And I always will. I've always loved you. I've always loved you, and I always will. I've always loved you. You promised. Check perfect. The meter shows 1,800 volts. All right, we'll go ahead. Stand by. Notify everybody on that list I gave you that we'll go ahead on schedule. Yes, 535. I'll bring the newspaper men in now.
I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, the Lord shall preserve me from all evil. He shall preserve my soul. The Lord preserveth my going out and my coming in from this time forth. And forever. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness, for they have been ever of old. Turn thee unto me, and have mercy upon me, for I am desolate and afflicted. Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee, when my heart is overwhelmed. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. <laughs> Show me thy ways, O Lord, teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Into thine hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. this girl. What about her? Think she might need some dough? What's she gonna do? With him gone? Who knows? It seemed like he was all she was living for. I wouldn't be surprised if she... Pops. Yes? Can I see that gun of yours? Gun? What for? Oh, I just want to look at it. Well, you know I can't let you handle that gun. I just want to look at it. Are you out of your mind? Yeah. I guess so. Guy over at the front table. Yeah. That's Parrot Faruko. Parrot Faruko? What are you talking about? What about him? Who's he? He's wanted for five killings. You heard about the guy that always gave him a full load? Six slugs, five fast? That's him. Wait a minute, let me see that. 
Why, he don't look any more like this picture than we do. Besides, this guy's been dead for years. What made you think of this all of a sudden? It ain't all of a sudden. I've been thinking about it a long time. Well, why'd you wait until now to tell us? You and him ain't never been in here at the same time before. I tell you, it's the parrot. He's had his face fixed, and they dyed that red hair of his. Yeah, you've been in too long. I've been months now. Every morning, his truck has stopped here, but I ain't never let him see me. Yeah, yeah. The way he walks and talks, and them eyes of his always shifting, he can't fool me. I've known him too long. Ah, oh, you're crazy. If I am, it's account of him. He should be doing this rap instead of me. Look, 46, stop playing detective. Yeah, go tell me a mail. Get going, will you? Boy, he's really going. not to touch the board. How could I know? I'm no fortune teller. Yes, they did call the governor. He said, try again. No more reprieve. They took him back to his cell. No, that boy was the only one who wasn't scared. He just kept smiling all through it. He seemed to be thinking about something else. But you've got to get those papers back off the streets. This is the worst boner we've ever pulled. Yes, Jim. Yes, Jim. No, Jim. Yes, Mr. Hanson. Yes, Mr. Hanson. No, Mr. Hanson. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, Crystal Ball, what do you see now? He scooped the radio. Tomorrow's news today. His boss hates newscasters. Oh, yes, but he loves him. <laughs> <laughs> well, sir, old 46 kept trying to tell us that this Blackie was Parrot Ferruco. He found an old wanted poster of the Parrot and kept waving it around. But it didn't add up to us because this Blackie don't look any more like Parrot Ferruco than I do. There wasn't any stopping old 46. He acted like he'd gone out of his mind. Yes, sir. They've got Blackie in the bus now. Yes, sir. We'll be right there. They want us to bring this Blackie up to the prison. Said they'd hold him there for the state police. Warden says it's okay to bring him in. He's calling the state police. Tell those newspaper boys we'll send the bus back. OK. 
okay. Sign on the execution. Now get this. That's 30 on the execution. Look, here's another yeah. item. No, that isn't all. There's been a murder here. It might be big. Some trucker killed an old car. Blackie, the old convict was called 46. Those are all the names I've got so far. It's another story. Yeah, Cole Freightline. Something about Perk Peruco. Remember him? Yeah, check the files. That's right, the big shot funeral. Perk Peruco. Yes. About three years ago, they picked him out of the river in a cement block. No, I don't know anymore. But this is murder. Yes, sir. What's wrong, Crystal Ball? Doesn't the boss love you anymore? I bet you told the boss last night this old con was going to be murdered. He says he isn't interested in anybody being murdered. Unless it's me. <laughs> Take that cord off his wrist. Give me the identification office. Walters, I want a set of prints made here in my office. Check them against Parent Faruco. Remember him? He served a term here for felony. We released him in 44 or 45. Check the files. Right. You men come with me. I want your statements on the shooting. Must be crazy. Do I look like Parrot Faruco? I'll let you know in a few minutes. and it's shorted out. That's why it threw fire and sparks all around the outlet where the wires come through the conduit to the chair. You've got it fixed? Now. Yes, we're ready. There's no chance of a slip up now. Did you make your tests? Yes, test perfect. Look, I'm too tired to tell you what I think now. 
But if anything happens this time... I tell you, it's perfect. I'm going to make test of that chair myself. If I have to do it with you in it. But I tell you, nothing will happen. It works perfect. Get me Sanderson. Hello, Sanderson. Why does it always take you so long to answer this intercom? Well, put a louder buzzer on her to get a hearing aid. Have those reporters gotten there yet? Okay, take them into the chamber. I'll bring the boy in myself. Prince you want a deputy. We can't delay it any longer, Jim. Hi, you parrot. Hi. That's quite a job they did on your face. Only the best. But they didn't do so well on your fingerprints. You can't have everything. Tell me, that cement block they fished up from the river. Yeah. They identified the body as yours. How did you do it? There's tricks in every trade. Five previous murders, and one this morning. Six shots each time. You must be partial to six. Yeah. It's my lucky number. But this time, I shot a seven. What do you mean? You didn't count Tim Hara. Tim Hara? Yeah. That girl is right. The boy didn't do it. Did you? No, we couldn't. The current failed all over the prison. There's no electricity. Where's the boy? The chaplain's taking him back to his cell. I can't understand what happened. Sit down, Jim. I want you to listen to this. Why did you kill Tim Harrow? 
He was hijacking my trucks. What about the boy? He had nothing to do with it. He was telling the truth. The sucker. Are you telling the truth? I got nothing to lose. Six killings or seven. You only go once. Why did you wait till now to say this? You didn't have Perry Fruco until now. I'm no sucker. And you'd let an innocent boy go to the chair. And that girl. Is sentimental, Warden. You'll sign a confession? Why not? Get a stenographer. Take it easy. Let's put a piece of paper in the typewriter. Thank you.